Hey everyone, welcome to our video series on the book Hands On with Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn and TensorFlow. Now in the last session, we have seen how we can perform the pre-processing on a given data set. Now the next topic that we have right now, it's around custom transformers. Now here, we have seen how we can perform the transformation on a given data using the various inbuilt functions. Now all these functions are actually available inside my scikit-learn library. So even though the scikit-learn provides so many useful transformers for us, sometimes we always require to have to write our own task depending on our complexity of the thing that of our requirement. So sometimes I'll have to write my own task. It could be like custom cleanup operation or sometimes if I want to combine a specific attribute, then in such scenarios, scikit-learn doesn't have and I have to create my own transformer. So I'll have to create my transformer so that I can work seamlessly with the existing scikit-learn functionality such as my pipeline. And here, when I'm doing this transformation, this scikit-learn, it relies on a typing, which is actually called as a duct typing technique. So all you have to do is, we just have to create a class and mainly implemented the three methods. So the three methods that I have to implement is fit, transform and fit underscore transform. Now this is an example where I'm creating a class. Okay, I'm creating a class and inside the parenthesis, I'm specifying my base estimator and the transform I'm mixing. And if you observe, I've just mentioned the method. So here in the scenario, fit method and the transform method. Okay, since it follows the duct typing technique, I just have to create a class and implement the three important methods. So this last method that I have mentioned, this fit underscore transform. So it would actually, we get it by free by simply adding the transformer mixin as a base class. So this is a custom class, which I'm calling it as combined attributes adder. And this is inheriting my base estimator and the transformer mixin. So if you add this base estimator as a base class, okay, you will also get two extra methods that is the get params and the set params, which will actually be useful for us for performing the automatic hyperparameter tuning. And that's the best part of creating the custom transformers by inheriting with the transformer mixin and the base estimator. Both of them are available under this sklearn.base. Now, this is a transformer class and this is going to add the combined attributes which we have used earlier. So here in the scenario, so I've just written the init method, okay, and uh, the fit method and the transform method. So this transformer has one hyperparameter that is add bedrooms per room, okay, and this is actually set to true by default, okay, add bedrooms per room is set to true by default. Now it's always, it's always recommended and it's actually helpful to provide the sensible default guys. So I encourage you to do the same whenever you are writing the code. So this hyperparameter that is add bedrooms per room is equal to true. It will help you to easily find out whether adding this attribute will help the machine learning model algorithm in improving or not. So more generally, you can add a hyperparameter to get any data preparation step for that you are not 100% sure about, which means you can specify the hyperparameter. And if you're not sure whether you want to use this parameter in your model, in such scenarios, you can take this approach. The more and more you automate these scenarios, that is these data preparation step, the more combination you will be able to try out because at the end of the day, you will be having multiple columns and you have to select the best possible columns. So the more combinations that you'll be trying out, the more better your model will be because you have done thorough check of the given features. So as a result of this, this will make a great combination. And more importantly, if you're automating it, 
you will be saving a lot of time. So this is going to create that custom transformer which I talked about. Okay, next here I am saying something like this. I'm saying I'm mentioning my column names and I'm just get that column indices and so on. Now after that, so after this, I'm creating a data frame. Okay, I'm just creating a data frame. This is how it would look like. Now the next thing that we have right now, this is the transformation pipeline. Now this transformation pipeline is all about processing the data or applying the feature scaling on the given data set. Because whenever you are working with any data set, the first thing that you normally have to apply is a feature scaling. So if you know it or not, even you'll be learning as you progress in the learning journey, guys, just want to let you know, if you're applying any machine learning algorithm, if you want it to perform well, it is always recommended that you bring all the features or all the columns in our data set should have a same scale. Now, this is very important, guys, especially if you're working on any data and if you're working on a simple model such as linear model or metric based models. So in such scenarios, feature scaling is one of the important step. So if you just go through and observe the various columns in the data frame, you can clearly observe that each and every column has its own range. Each and every column has its own range. Now, whenever we are performing the normalization and, and thinking to process these columns in our data frame, there are actually two ways in doing it. One, min-max scaling method. The another method, we call it as standardization method. So this min-max this min -max scaling method is also referred as normalization method because both does the same thing. So in simple words, we are going to end up in scaling the values in the range of 0 to 1. So what we do is we do this by subtracting the minimum value and we are going to divide it by the maximum value that is the maximum and the minimum value. So that is the range value to get the values in the range of 0 to 1. And in order to do that, we have the min max scaler which is present inside this scikit-learn.preprocessing. So if I want to show you where does this min max scaling is present, I can say from sklearn dot preprocessing, I'll import min max scaler, and this is how you can import this min max scaler which is present inside this scikit-learn. Okay, so let's say if I don't want to do this. If I want to, uh, don't want to do this in the range of zero to one, then we can apply one more method that's called as data standardization. Now this data standardization is an another scenario where we are going to deduct the mean and we are going to divide by standard deviation. In other words, we are transforming each and every value in my column into its respective Z score okay into its respective z-score and this z-score guys this z-score is one of the most used method because some of the advantage that we have whenever we are converting the data with into its standard scalar value standard scalar is also called a z-score is that these values are much less affected by the outliers now to give you an example from the notebook Suppose a district had the median income equal to 100 by mistake. Then in such scenarios, when you do a min-max scaling, this would crush all the other values which are between 0 to 15. Do you agree with me? So if I have the median value, so let's say real values of median are given by 0 to 15. Okay. Now if I have a maximum value as 100, which is an outlier, this would crush the values of 0 to 15 as 0 to 0 0.15. Is it making sense? How is it going to affect me? But when I talk about standard scalar, in such scenarios, it is going to transform in a much more better way where it will not be much affected by the outlier because in this scenario, I'm considering the mean that is x minus mean divided by standard deviation. So since I'm using the standard deviation and the mean, 
this will be less affected by the outliers in the data set. Now, whenever we are applying these kind of transformations on a data set, we basically apply it in two steps. First, we perform the fit on the data. Now, when I say fit on the data, it is going to learn the patterns in the data. Okay. And once it learns the patterns in the data, we perform the transformation. When I say transformation, we use those patterns. It could be a statistical value or it could be a minimum maximum value in the scenario of min max scalar. We use it and we change those values. So there are multiple steps that are involved. Now, when we have those sequence of steps, which we have to do it in a specific order, in such scenarios, we prefer to work with scikit-learns pipeline. So using this scikit-learn pipeline, we will be able to combine multiple data transformation. And that is what being used in this example. Now, just be with me this entire video guys, this entire chapter, just be with me and look at the overall high level implementation. As we progress in the further modules of machine learning, I'll take you through a step-by-step -step journey where I'll be writing the code. Since this is a hands-on overview for you, just be with me and observe the data at a very high level. Just pay, pay close attention to me and that's all I would request you for now. So I'm importing this pipeline and we are applying the standard scalar. So this pipeline and then I'm imputing the, I'm performing the simple imputation. That means I'm wherever the values are missing, I'm performing the imputation of median. And then I am calling this combined attributes adder. And after that, I'm performing the scaling using standard scalar. So this is going to apply all these steps in a sequential fashion. In order to do that, so I'll create my pipeline. Once the pipeline has been initialized, will perform fit and transform on a given data set. And once that is done, if I display my data, this is how my data would look like. So we have transformed the data in an efficient manner. So this pipeline, this is going to take a list of name or an estimator page, which defines the sequence of step. Now, one thing that you have to ensure is the last term, yes, the last term should be a transformer, which means they should have a fit underscore transform method. Okay. Now here, this standard scalar had a, has a fit and transform method. That is a mandatory. The other one, it, it can simply have the transform that is more than enough. Okay. Now on the left hand side, these are just the names. You can mention any names as per your preference. Okay. Next. Once you have initialized this pipeline, you'll call the fit and you can go ahead and perform the transform as well. So what we have done till now is till now we have handled the categorical columns and the numerical columns in a separate manner. Now I can actually go ahead and it can be convenient to have a single transformer, which will have the ability to take care of the appropriate transformer on each column. Now, in order to do that in scikit-learn, we've got a functionality that's called as column transformer. So the good news is this works really well with them with this pandas data frame guys. Now, in order to apply this transformation on my housing data here, I'm importing this column transformer from sklearn.compose. And I'm defining my numeric attributes and the categorical attributes. So I'm saying that this is a column transformer for numerical pipeline. I'm using the numerical attributes for categorical uh, data that is categorical features. I'm applying the one hot encoder on this categorical attributes. So guys, this is going step ahead from the pipeline that is the SKLN pipeline. This will help me to apply on the basis, yes, on the basis of type of data that we are working with. How cool is this guys? Next, this I have initialized as full pipeline and I'm performing the fit transform on my housing data. So what we have done is I've just imported this column transformer class. I've got the list of numerical column names and list of categorical column names. Then I have constructed my column transformer. 
So this requires a list of tuples where each tuple contains the name, a transformer and the list of column names. Okay. It can be a list of names or list of indices that my transformer should be applied to. In this example, I'm specifying that numerical pipeline, which we have created earlier. See, this is the pipeline that I have created earlier for transforming my numerical data. So it should be applied on my numerical attributes and one hot encoder is what it has to be applied on a categorical columns. So finally, I'll apply this column transformer on my housing data. Okay, so this is going to apply the transformer on the appropriate columns and concatenate the output along my second axis. Okay, so this is how it would look like. Now, the thing is guys, when I apply this one hot encoder, so remember this is going to return a dense matrix. Whenever I'm having a mix of sparse and dense matrix, this column transformer estimates the density of the final matrix and it returns the sparse, sparse matrix. If I have the density which is lower than the threshold value, by default guys, I think this sparsity threshold is set as 30%. So in this scenario, it is returning me a dense matrix. So what we have done is we have created the entire pipeline which will take care, yes, which will take care of the data transformation. So I have this pre-processing pipeline which takes the full housing data and apply the appropriate transformations for each of my column. Okay. Now once the transformation is complete, if I go ahead and display the shape of my data, we've got 16512 rows and 16 columns. Okay, so this is how we have performed the transformation. Now there is another method. This is the method where you are going to make use of old version of scikit-learn and you are using the third party library and you are doing this activity. So with this, you can go ahead and do this activity guys. Okay, this is an old solution which is based on the data frame selector. Since the scikit-learn is updated and we are running on a latest code version. I'm just skipping it how we are doing it. So alternatively, you can also look at this implementation as well. So with this, we have pre-processed the data set guys. We have performed the pre-processing on the data set. Now, as we progress in the next video journey, we'll see how we can select and train a model. So we will initialize the model, we'll perform the fit and then we'll go ahead and we'll perform the prediction and generate the evaluation and we'll also look into the other things that we need to concentrate on while performing the fit on the data set. So we'll see everything in detail as we progress in the next learning journey. So stay tuned. I look forward to seeing you next time.